I'm Risa Van Fleet. I'm with the International Institute for Animal Assisted Play Therapy. I'd like to talk a little bit about our relationship orientation in doing animal assisted play therapy. If there's one central feature, one core principle, one core value that we have, it's that of having and developing healthy relationships. Most clients do better when they're supported by healthy relationships, and some of our clients have difficulties with relationships. So what we're always doing is trying to show what a healthy relationship with an animal looks like. And so that means before we ever start having sessions involving our animals in animal-assisted play therapy, we need to be developing really healthy, mutually satisfying, mutually respectful relationships with them. So that's a whole process in and of itself. Uh, very often when I see news programs on television about animal assisted therapy programs, it's presented in a very compelling way from the point of view of what advantages it offers to the humans. Very few times do I see them talking about it actually offering some advantages to animals. And sometimes it really does not offer advantages to the animals because you can see these pictures of animals that are just looking pretty miserable being put into the situation. What we value and what we try to do in everything that we do is to develop these mutual relationships. And we view our relationship with our animals which is on display for our clients whenever we're doing animal assisted play therapy as both a metaphor and a model of a good relationship for our clients. So it's, it shows the clients what maybe they can expect in their relationships with us, but also it shows them how to be in a nice relationship with an animal. One of the things that we do that serves this focus on relationship is to learn to always be looking at the animal's point of view whenever we're working with them. And really, I prefer that we do that all the time. We're living with them as well. So part of that means that we have to learn about animal body language and how animals communicate stress. So the way a horse might exhibit stress is going to be at least partly different from the way a dog would exhibit stress. So whatever species you work with, it's important that you learn how to read and understand their body language in real time. And that's part of our training programs is how to do that. So that whenever we're having sessions with clients, not only are we paying attention to our clients and the goals that we're trying to meet with those clients, but we're also paying attention to the animals point of view. We're trying to see the situation the way the animal sees the situation. And we can also help our clients do that some of the time to make sure that the animals not only tolerate what we're doing, because we don't like just tolerating things, we actually want the animals to enjoy their experience and be enriched by their experience. So learning as much as possible about the species that you're working with and your own individual animals is really critical to this work. And then to really work all the time on developing these kind of relationships where part of the two-way street means I'm going to look at things from your point of view on a regular basis. Another thing that we do is that we want the animal's involvement in this to be voluntary. Not only whether they decide to walk through the door or not, but we want them at any given time during a session to be able to walk away and say, I'm, I've had enough or I'm not into that right now. One of the ways we do that is the level of training that we offer. We generally work with the dogs off leash. That's different than many visitation programs where the dogs do have to be on leash, but in our work we want them to be off leash. And also the horses, once in a while, we might lead them on the rope, but most of the time they are completely at liberty and they can come and go as they wish. This has several valuable purposes. One is from the animal's point of view again, which is they can say, no, I've had enough. I don't want to do that anymore, and we respect that. If a client has a reaction to that, we are the therapist and we can help them with their reaction. Uh, the other part of it is that when the animals truly are volunteering their presence to be with the clients, clients can feel that. There's something very powerful that when a dog comes up to you wagging its tail saying, yeah, I'd like to play with you, or a horse comes up and shows interest in you. We don't want horses where they see people coming and they go, oh no, this I'm going to be put to work again, let me get out of here. We want that voluntary approach, which again with clients who have attachment difficulties or relationship problems, they start to see what it feels like to truly 
genuinely have an experience of someone else wanting to be with them.